Ariane Space closed its eyes and prayed as Ariane 5 flew of course. This and more now on Kenyus. Hi Lucas here, welcome to Kenyus for week 4 2018 and as always a big shout out to you my Kenyus boosters on Patreon. Thanks for the thrust. Next to Ariane 5 there was another Chinese launch. Long March 2C took off from Xichang on Thursday towards a by 35 degrees inclined low earth orbit. Up top was the fourth set of three satellites for the reconnaissance constellation called Yao Gan and a small secondary payload called Nanosat 1A. Yao Gan translates to remote sensing and consists of several satellites flying one after another in different orbital planes. The rocket is one of China's smaller ones able to lift 4 metric tons to low earth orbit. That of course varies depending on the inclination but that is roughly where Yao Gan went. Its setup is a little unusual from other launch vehicles. The optional upper stage burns solid propellant while the two stages below burn liquid hypergolics. However, since it is optional I assume it was not used in this particular launch since it was not mentioned anywhere or at least not where I looked. Shortly after takeoff the rocket turned east flying over land due to the launch site's location. I saw some video footage of it recorded by citizens and that is just crazy. Even on smartphones without a zoom these appear incredibly close. I expect more and more of such footage to pop up online as rocket launches get more popular in China. They plan to launch 40 rockets this year alone which is on average almost one per week and they will also try to get another rover to the moon which I will of course cover as well. Now why are 40 rockets a big deal? Well even if funding plays not a big role building and launching rockets in China, the launch cadence meaning how many rockets launch per year would highly benefit from reusable boosters and as they are switching to non hypergolics and more efficient propellants I am sure they will come up with at least a partly reusable long march at some point. Once the rocket went through its staging and burned out it released its headlights which from then on placed themselves into the required locations autonomously. This is simply done by changing the orbital altitude slightly. Moving lower makes the satellites orbit faster and moving higher makes it orbit more slowly. The satellites orient themselves using cameras pointing at the stars. In space without a bright sky to look through one can see the stars 24 7 as long as the camera lens is not pointed towards the earth, the moon or the sun. These objects are incredibly bright and would flood the image sensor with too much light to also capture stars. And now to Ariane 5. Ariane, Ariane, Ariane. What shall I say, I am kind of disappointed to be honest. The rocket itself of course is innocent and just did what it was programmed to. It launched on Thursday as usual from French Guiana in South America and the targeted orbit was a geosynchronous transfer one inclined by 3 degrees. The launch site is almost at the equator which means it can pretty much fly into any inclination as long as it avoids flying over land. The main payload consisted of SES-14 which will be positioned at 47.5 degrees west and al 3 moving to 20 degrees west. Both are communications headlights sitting stationary at their geosynchronous slots 35,000 km away. Strapped to SES-14 is a payload for NASA called GOLD, the global scale observations of the limb and disc. It's actually pretty cool to strap some scientific equipment to commercial satellites and I hope this will be much more common in the future. Gold will observe the full disk of the planet at once and its limb. This is the circular edge around it which it will observe in the ultraviolet spectrum to gather more data about the weather in the upper edgemo, thermo and ionospheres. The outermost layers which until now weren't given as much attention as the rest of Earth's gas cover. Ariane 5 stands as usual 55 meters tall powered by its efficient cryogenic upper and first stages burning liquid hydrogen and oxygen. However, strapped to the sides are giant solid rocket boosters similar to the space shuttle which are on the opposite side of the efficiency spectrum. The total efficiency of all things combined is still relatively high because the majority of speed is added by the efficient cores. The boosters basically just buy some time in space generating the majority of vertical speed that gets things to space while the cores add the precious horizontal velocity that keeps them in space. As mentioned in the beginning Ariane 5 has had an anomaly which was to my surprise completely ignored in the live webcast. Now I sadly missed the launch itself by a couple minutes so I was not able to follow it live from the beginning. 
reviewing the video footage afterwards, knowing something went wrong, was incredibly strange. First of all, what I've learned is the main animation Ariane Space shows is just that, an animation, not a simulation, of the incoming telemetry of the rocket. It does always the same and does not reflect what is actually happening. The animation went through all the stages of flight, although they had lost telemetry very early into the mission. I can understand that, at least regarding the general public. However, on stream you could also see the customers, which saw the same images and were completely unaware of the situation, smiling into the cameras as the speakers told the rocket was performing nominally. To be fair, it performed nominally, just in the wrong direction. What now follows is only my interpretation of what I saw and there is a chance I could be wrong. The official investigation is still ongoing and I will of course share the conclusions as they will be published. Until then, let's have a discussion on what you think about all of that. If you pay really close attention to the live stream, you can see two screens showing real data. One is the trajectory on the map and the other shows the altitude. Here is a crop showing in green the trajectory Ariane should have followed and in yellow the one it really went. This is quite some deviation I would say. Instead of following a low inclined 3 to 6 degrees trajectory, Ariane 5 went further south at roughly 21 degrees where the payload ended up being released. This is a huge difference and judging by the close proximity to the coast, it could have been terminated. The boosters separate early into the flight and normally crash into the ocean approximately 500 km away from the coast in their drop zone. Not so at this particular launch. It's hard to tell where they crashed but it must have been very very close. I don't know how big the drop zone is, no ship is allowed to enter during launch but this could have been well outside of it. However, that's just speculation and I hope they will release such information when the time comes. Having another look at the telemetry, you can see the yellow line jumped back onto the green one on both images. That looks weird but can be explained by the switch in tracking stations. The one at the launch site in Galileo uses three dishes which means it can easily track down the exact position of the vehicle basically having all three coordinates in 3D space. The second one in Natal however has only one dish, at least as shown on ESA's website. They are pretty old from 2002 so it could have changed. Having only one dish available however would make it much harder to track the exact position so what I think it did is to simply track one coordinate along the calculated line the rocket should follow. That would explain the jump in telemetry data. Soon after the signal was lost which makes sense since the rocket went completely out of sight far at the bottom. Interesting to note is the trajectory was slightly lower which also makes sense since moving into a higher inclination the rocket can make less use of Earth's equatorial speed to reach orbit. Luckily for Ariane space the rocket still made it to space successfully and while it ended up in a different inclination the satellites will be able to correct the course. But that of course costs fuel and therefore decreases the lifespan of the satellites. It's therefore at least a partial failure so the insurance companies are probably already discussing the lost value and such. The question that remains and has to be answered is how much risk did Ariane Space take into account not terminating the flight as it went of course, if it really did. Did they put people in danger or were there no ships around to get hit by the boosters? And am I overly harsh with Ariane Space or is this really much more serious than it looks? Tell me what you think about it because I honestly don't know if I judged this correctly or not. The live stream was just incredibly strange. I can't link it because Ariane Space removed it from their YouTube channel and I have no idea how legal those reuploads are but who seeks shall find. Ok, that concludes this episode and I hope to see you next one if you like. And yes, Falcon Heavy, I know, soon. Have a nice one guys. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching.